My name is John Borisow, and uh, I'm with the Chagrin Falls Historical Society. And the program I'm going to share with you today uh, looks at the history of chagrin and artists. Chagrin has always been a community that has had many artists, and art has always been important for the community. The first artist I'm going to talk to you about, his name is Jehu Brainerd. And he lived from 1808 to 1878. And um, he worked with woodcuts. And he was an illustrator. He actually published the first um, Farmers and Mechanics Journal here in Chagrin Falls in 1842. And he did all the illustrations for that. He was a teacher. He was a professor. He wrote and illustrated numerous textbooks. Uh, he was in Chagrin for uh, about 15 years, but spent a lot of his, his time in Cleveland at the homeopathic um, hospital. This is a woodcut of his, and this is actually at the bottom of Grove Hill. And if you look at the house that's up on the hill, that's the home of Noah Graves. You see a stagecoach in, in the foreground. Uh, at this point in time, uh, Chagrin was on the stage line, uh, ran three times a week from Cleveland through Chagrin Falls to, to Warren, Ohio. Here's a photograph of about that same scene um, about 1920, and you can see that the, the hotel is still there. Uh, it was torn down about 1922. Here's another woodcut, and this is the earliest image that we have of the village. Uh, it dates from a book that was published in 1846. We think he did it probably in about 1842. And what's interesting about this is that you look in the foreground, you see him sitting there. And uh, the view that you're looking at here, if, you, if you're familiar with Bentleyville Road, there's a section of Bentleyville Road where it goes down to one lane. And that's right about where he's sitting, and he's looking due east. And if you look a little bit to the left of him, you see the, a dam, that's the Williams uh, Foundry. You go up a little more, you'll see another dam, that's the uh, Bullard Manufacturing Company. And then you come to the falls. And, and you can see the falls about, right about in the center of, of this particular woodcut. There's a dam on top of the falls, and then you can't see the dam where uh, Mario's was, and then if you go up a little further, you can see the dam where the paper mill was. So you see five of the nine dams here in this particular woodcut. Another interesting feature is that on the right-hand side, in about two-thirds of the way up, you see a building um, that has a cupola on it, uh, that's the Asbury Seminary. That was the first secondary school in Chagrin Falls, and uh, it, was, it was built in 1843. So that's Jehu Brainerd. Probably one of the best known early painters from Chagrin Falls is Henry Church, Jr. Born in 1836, and he died in 1908. The thing that he was originally famous for was Squaw Rock, uh, but he was a blacksmith, a self-taught artist and a sculptor. Uh, he has works of art in the Cleveland Museum of Art, in the Abbey Aldrich Rockefeller Museum, um, in Williamsburg, Virginia, and in other museums around the country. Here's that same view that I was talking about previously. Um, you can see the same um, dams going up the river. You can see five of them. And you see the Asbury Seminary over on the right. Uh, again, and there's a building in front of the Asbury Seminary, and that's the Eggleston House Hotel. So that's how we date this particular photo, because that was built in 1856. So this dates from the late 1850s to the early 1860s. We actually had this restored um, at the Cle Cleveland um, Intermuseum Conservation Association. Uh, we had a donor that uh, allowed us to restore this. Now here's another Henry Church, and this is actually at the Cleveland Museum of Art. Uh, he was very eclectic. He did a lot of different kinds of work. This is a still life that he did, and he had a sense of humor. And so this is the original still life, and then he monkeyed it up. Uh, this particular painting is, is known as the monkey painting, and that's at the Ab Abbey Aldrich Rockefeller Museum in Williamsburg, Virginia. Henry's blacksmith shop was right on the corner of Franklin and uh, West Washington. 
And a lot of times he would keep his sculptures in the front yard. So if you look at behind the fence there, you see five or six stone sculptures, including the uh, lion. This is uh, something that he prepared for his gravestone. Um, this photograph dates from about a 1906. It's from an article that said the, one of the most interesting men in Ohio. And the uh, sculptor itself is after the verse, the Bible verse that says, the lion and the lamb will lay down together and a little boy will lead them. Henry also did drawings of some of the schools. And this is how we know where some of the schools were around Chagrin Falls, uh, the early schools before the Asbury Seminary. Education was very important to the early settlers. And so these uh, neighborhood schools were where the kids went uh, before they went out to the seminary. The next artist I'm gonna talk about is Max Barnard. Uh, Max was an extremely prolific artist. He loved to do scenes around the village. Uh, he was a house painter, and all of his paintings were done with regular house paint. He liked the Amish, he liked to do caricatures, uh, and he liked to make different things. Besides painting, uh, he made things like birdhouses. So here's Max, and um, here's a photograph of him showing some of his birdhouses that he would make. He would replicate houses or he'd do these little cottages. Um, it was a way for him to make some extra money. There's another birdhouse that Max made. Um, he lived at the kind of the base of Grove Hill where the Step North complex is. But he loved to do scenes. And so here's a, a, a winter scene and um, he's known for the skies. He would have these very colorful emotional skies in, in many of his paintings. And I mentioned that he liked to do caricatures. And one of the interesting things about his caricatures was he did these really later in life. But all of the people that he uh, were, were in his uh, caricatures were people he knew from his childhood. And his caricatures would really tell you something about the people. So if you look at this couple, you can see something kind of interesting is going on here. Mr. Kingsbury looks like he's just kind of lounging around, and of course Mrs. Kingsbury is working. So one of the interesting things that in researching this particular couple was the 1900 census shows Mr. and Mrs. Kingsbury living in Chagrin Falls. The 1910 census shows Mr. Kingsbury living in Chagrin Falls and it's, it says that he's a widower. However, the 1910 census also has Mrs. Kingsbury living in Mayfield, and she said she's a widow. So they kind of got rid of each other. The next artist I'm gonna talk about is Alfred Howell. And um, he was born in 1889, and he was actually born in England. And his family immigrated to um, Canada, and he lived in Canada until he came to Cleveland in 1929. And when I was doing some research on him, one of the things that, that I found was very interesting um, was that when he was, he was trained in, at Canada, and uh, he, uh, after the First World War, the Canadian government wanted someone who would um, they wanted to put a number of statues throughout the country, bronze statues, that would show uh, the valor of their servicemen. And so they put out for bids for those, and Alfred Howell won those bids. So he has sculptures, bronze sculptures, throughout Canada. Um, for many years, he was the director of art for the Cleveland Board of Education. Uh, many of you may not know, but at one point, Cleveland was one of the top school districts in the country. And Alfred Howell's job was to infuse art into the curriculum. Every aspect of the curriculum had some form of art. He's also known for his colorful watercolors. So this is a sculpture that's in Toronto. This is a sculpture that's uh, in Sault Ste. Marie, Canada. 
There's a painting of Squaw Rock, Henry Church's Squaw Rock. He loved to paint scenes in and around uh, Chagrin Falls. Here's the old Horns Flying School, uh, the Chagrin Falls Airport, uh, that was in operation into the early 1970s. It was located where uh, Kensington Green is located today. Here's a watercolor um, of Main Street, downtown Chagrin Falls. Um, you can make out the popcorn shop, uh, the Hanna building, um, a number of different structures. He, he liked to do this kind of mood painting with, with the uh, rainstorms where it would kind of fade out. Here's another one that he did, and uh, this is the old Village Exchange. Uh, that building's still there. It, it was a restaurant for a period of time. Alfred Howell was very prolific and uh, quite an artist. He li actually lived up on Bentleyville Road. Now the next artist I'm gonna talk about is David Philip Wilson, 1902 to 1981. Wilson actually lived in the home that's on the top of Grove Hill. And he was most famous as a portrait artist. He did uh, about 28 or 29 governors of different states throughout the country. He also did the, the, the official portraits of John Glenn, Neil Armstrong, Lyndon Johnson, and his wife, Benny, was also an artist. And he taught at the Cleveland School of Art. Here's a self-portrait of him that he did. Here's his portrait of John Glenn. This actually hangs in the State House um, down in Columbus. And there's a photograph here of him uh, when he was just first unveiling it. He, they actually showed it at the Village Hall in Chagrin Falls, uh, Township Hall in Chagrin Falls, before uh, it was taken down to Columbus and uh, hang, hangs in the, the uh, State House. This is a charcoal portrait that he did of, of a doctor in Chagrin Falls, Dr. Cameron, who was a famous Chagrin Falls doctor for many years. He was involved with a lot of different kinds of activities in Chagrin in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. This is another watercolor that um, he did of a scene in, in New England. Uh, again, he was very well known, and his wife also was, a, was an artist. And they had a really nice studio at the top of Grove Hill. So the next artist I'm gonna talk about is Bob Tackett. And uh, Bob was really one of the visionaries here for the Valley Art Center. And some of his work is hanging here during this particular show of the visionaries of the Valley Art Center. Um, he was a uh, commercial art teacher at Orange, and that's where I first got to know him. I worked for Mayfield Schools, and he was a contact for kids uh, from Mayfield to going into the commercial art program. He also taught uh, at the Cooper School of Art, uh, Cuyahoga Community College, and Lakeland Community College. Bob really loved to teach. He uh, created many watercolor scenes of Chagrin Falls, and he also illustrated a children's book. So here's Bob, and um, he looks like kind of a gruff guy, but he, he is not. You know, he's someone that was very gentle uh, and just very, very creative. Here's a uh, painting that he did, and this shows River Street and West Street, and you can see the uh, hardware store in here. You can see the back of Village Hall. You can see the corner of the, the, the Wren shop, which uh, became Dave Subs. So this is kind of a scene probably from the 40s. Here's one of his books, um, Max and Annie's Mysterious Campfire. The, the series were Max and Annie. And so he, he did these. Um, here's another Max and Annie. He was the illustrator for these, uh, working with um, Sandra Filgram, and um, they published a number of different books. Here's one of his pencil of the falls. He did a whole series of these for phone books uh, in Chagrin. It used to be uh, a tradition in Chagrin that the, the, the artists would actually compete to have their uh, paintings or drawings as the cover of the phone books. And um, Bob was one of the first. So here's the popcorn shop. 
The next artist I'm going to talk about is Florian Lawton. And Florian Lawton is also one of the visionaries here at the Valley Art Center. He taught painting at the Cleveland Institute of Art. He was also associated with the Orange Art Center. During World War II, he actually was one of those guys that painted those pretty ladies on the sides of, uh, of bombers. Uh, that was what his job was during World War II, to paint um, those different figures uh, you know, on the sides of, of airplanes. He's known for his uh, paintings of the Amish, and he was a member of the Whiskey Painters of America. This is a cover from the, showing an Amish group uh, when he was, uh, had a show at Gallery One in, in Menor, Ohio. The top scene is a scene along the Chagrin River, and the, the bottom scene is again one of um, Amish. One of his paintings uh, was given to uh, President Clinton, one of his paintings of, of uh, Amish scene and hung in the White House. There's the iconic hardware store painting at Christmas time with the wreath hanging up there. Here's a, an, another Amish, Florian Lawton. Uh, very beautiful and sensitive paintings. Again, one of the uh, founders here of the Valley Art Center. So that's just a kind of a retrospective of some of the different artists, the history of artists here in Chagrin Falls. And the Valley Art Center here uh, is an organization which keeps that alive. So thank you very much. Thank you.